Hey there, NJRoot22.com here with another cheap wine reviews vlog. Zero script, zero thinking actually. Tonight was just a kind of like a last minute thing here. I just kicked a bottle of this Apothic Inferno. Let's see if it focuses. I hate this shit. I'm using a 10 year old digital camera which is like considered like, what do you call it? Uh, like uh, antique almost in, in uh, today's uh, day and age. But this is a <sighs> apothic, uh, small batch. Okay, here we go, buzzwords from the get go. Small batch, limited release. Marketing, I see small batch, limited release. First thing I think of, marketing. Because they charge 15 bucks a bottle at uh, Bourbon Street, $17 a bottle, and I'm, I'm, it's $14.99, $16.99. I rounded up one penny for those people that are bean counters. Um, and this is a 15.9% red blend. And their big uh, claim to fame here is, <clears throat> this is a, a trend I've noticed throughout the wine industry, it's aged in blank blank barrels for blank blank days. This this was aged in whiskey whiskey barrels, okay? Um, and this is all marketing, and I didn't read it before, I mean, other than seeing the, the percentage of, of alcohol, I, I didn't think about what whiskey barrels really meant when I cracked it open and I tasted it, and it hit me like a, like a, like a, like, like a wall of bricks, okay? If you're not used to drinking wine that was aged in whiskey barrels for X number of days, then you're going to find this to be slightly off-putting or odd, or maybe you might like it. Um, my significant other said it tasted like a port, whatever that means. I've never had a port. I, I somehow I equate port with old people, eh, whatever. It has a unique taste. Let's just, just be fair and let's just say it has a unique taste. Number two. After you've acclimated yourself, by the way, little tip here, they, have, they sell this angular microfiber brush, best for cleaning the inside of your windshield if you ever have to, but you gotta use spray. It doesn't It works okay, dry, use spray. Get two of these things and then use one, one for the spray and the second to dry it off. But anyway, that's why it's here in the field of view. I, I wasn't too thrilled with it. I mean, you know, there's a little bit left and I've got a wine glass, so I'm just gonna drink it straight out of the bottle. You feel like you're drinking booze a little bit. I mean, I don't know what this Apothic company is and uh, Apothic Wines, and it's 15.9% alcohol. I've heard in the grapevine, <laughs> whatever, um, that that this wine company is just sort of like a, sort of like a chain. And, and when you think about chain stores, there's nothing really special. They're like a business and they, they're, they get all their kind of mantra or juice from, from marketing and stuff. And it's not really a truly, like a wine company would be like a wine family. I, I don't know anything about this other than what I've heard. They're from California and God knows how, what happens to people when you live in California long enough. Um, and, and they just have words on here. I'm not even gonna read it. I mean, I, 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 I'll blast off a couple words here. Oh, it's a masterful encounter, a long, clean finish, layers of man, maple, layers of maple. To me, if I didn't read any of that crap or I didn't think about this too much, I would say to myself that this is a chemical drink that has another layer of chemical flavor to it. To me, it does not taste authentic. Uh, it tastes like they, 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 mm, like created it like Frankenstein in a lab. Honestly, I mean, like, it's quite possible, and I, I'd be unfair if I didn't sit, get, at least give them the chance that they might have done this the right way. But to me, 
they, they had their goal before they figured out what to do. And they said, let's make this happen. I, I don't know, I, to me, it doesn't sound right. It's six, almost 16% alcohol, which is way high, and also $15 a bottle plus tax is 50% above our max for the cheap wine reviews. So, I guess I can say a couple things. It's different. It's definitely, um, I guess, welcome to have a different flavor and taste um, when you're used to the same old thing and, and, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to bash it for being different. Um, I'm not sure whether I like it yet or not. I, I'm not not enjoying it. Um, it's just a very unique taste and I, it's not one that I'm 100% sure I like um, or want to go back to unless they put something addictive in it which will make me want it every time I go to the, to the liquor store or wine store, or spirit store or whatever you want to call it. And I'm definitely not doing two bottles. I may crack open, I did buy two bottles. Um, I may crack open bottle number two just to get, you know, whatever, the, the last one for the nightcap, you know, a quarter of it uh, consumed. But I, I, I just, it makes me think about when I, when I drink things outside of my comfort zone or the price zone, it gives me an opportunity to, you know, think a little bit harder about, uh, about, you know what, the garage door light went off. I'm gonna activate it, there we go. Um, it gives me an opportunity to think about like the, 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 the different variations of taste and everybody has a preference. Um, I'm sad to, to presume that, that most people, you know, form their tastes based on external influences and not their own. Um, whether it's uh, believing a, a, a wine uh, theory or, or having friends that, that tout wines and they believe it. You know, I do everything on my own. I don't give a crap. If someone says it's good, I'm not gonna automatically like, like it because they say it's good. I drink everything with my own opinion, always. I will never like something just because someone else I know or someone I respect or someone I've read about and don't know or respect has written about something and they say, oh, it's this, that, and the other thing. I, I cannot allow myself to be influenced at all. It's my tongue and my body influences me and my brain. So keep that in mind when you form your own conclusions about anything and, and ask yourself, how did you get those conclusions or opinions? And I love rambling on, on my wine, uh, my wine, cheap wine reviews, vlogs, because I think it all kind of interrelates to each other. You can't just say that, you know, obviously I, I haven't built up a reputation yet and I don't have eight, 8 million followers or 20 million subscribers. But I, I think it's important for people that have the patience to listen and to, to sentences and I, ideals and logic form over time. And, and you can see probably if you've watched, this is I think the 12th or 13th or 15th video. I can't even keep track anymore because I, I film everything way in advance and I edit it later and it comes out once a week. So this could be coming out. This, it's like 35 degrees and it's uh, no October. It's probably coming out in November, this, this review. It might be cold, it might be warmer, who knows. I just think it's very important for people to, to think through things and just have conversations with people and, and, uh, and not jump to conclusions. Like, like I said, like this is my first time trying this. Maybe my second, I don't know, I, I might have had it before. But I remember that distinct flavor. And they put in clear writing here that it's aged in whiskey barrels for 60 days. That's the big thing. They, they put something in some other container for a certain amount of time. And I, I guess it gives a, it a different flavor um, or taste or in whatever is in, in there. Um, I, I just don't know how I feel about this 100% yet because 
you know, I, I immediately thought that it might have been some sort of nefarious, um, false uh, taste uh, creation, but I, I could be wrong as well. And I, I don't want to be unfair 100% to ap apothic uh, regarding that, but I have my doubts when it comes to the industry, any industry, food or, or any kind of product that they say is one thing, is usually another thing. And um, marketing is, has a very unique way of, of, of achieving that because people believe it. And, and I'm a little bit of a cynic when it comes to all this official looking, I mean, <laughs> look at it, it's like all in like typewriter print, like somebody typed it out, like it was some sort of a birth certificate, you know, and those things can be uh, fraudulently uh, modified as well. Um, I just don't buy marketing at all from anyone anymore, um, at all. I don't care if it's the small farmer or like, cause marketing, it's become about image and how things look and the packaging. And you look at a lot of these products out there and they, they especially if you look at, at some of the mainstream products, let's just talk about food for a minute. If you look at the mainstream products, in like a supermarket like ShopRite or Wegmans and you see these, they look like it's like some guy in, in his garage making beef jerky. Um, but it's not, it's it's like this trillion dollar company making it and they have this, they have this small batch kind of packaging and it makes it look like it's from some guy that's making it, but it's not. It's, it's made in a massive factory somewhere. And that's what bugs me the most is because packaging and presentation absolutely um, can influence a person and, and their decision and what to buy because they don't really have a connection with who made it and this is why I like going to like these local uh, farmers and the uh, buffalo farms where they actually make the meat and it, it becomes very tough for me because or us because I want to support the local guy but then he's three or four times more expensive and you run into your own problem. It's like, I, I can't, this is not sustainable for me to buy $20 a pound hamburger when I can get it for $2 uh, for 73% at a place like Aldi. Aldi, I've been saying Aldi for the longest time, but Aldi, I guess is the right way to say it. If you're, if you're from Germany, yeah, I say Aldi, yeah. Anyway, whatever. I'm rambling here, I'm totally rambling. I'll probably cut most of it out, but uh, I, I'm not a big fan of fancy marketing. And it, it's like, it's, it, the presentation isn't, isn't everything, it's, it's, the, it's the end product. And I don't have a chemical testing lab here, I can't figure out exactly what's in here, but and they say it's 15.9%. And I, I wanna add a little footnote here real quick. The 12% Saddlebred um, Sellers Pinot Noir, which I really enjoyed the taste of tremendously. Uh, I don't know if I put this in, into the blog post or not or in the video, but it, it sort of didn't pass the two bottle test. For one reason, I presume, because I've only done the two bottle test once or maybe twice with that, but it's because the flavor was so like light that for me to enjoy it in my little watered down, you know, Starbucks model here, I um, I couldn't, wa I think I watered it down like um, one to two. So it was a uh, one part water, two parts wine. And that to me, like normally, at the very least, I normally water it down as one to one, where it's half water, half wine. And if it's a, a very bold and flavorful one, I do minimum two parts water, one part wine. Like like a five ounce glass normally would fit into this 32 ounce uh, thing, with, you know, minus the ice. And two to one, like 15 ounces of water to, to, or three to one, 15 ounces of water to five ounce wine, the rest ice, is usually a really good way to drink my wine because I get very hydrated, I don't feel crappy, da da da. But because of the 12% saddlebred, it was like two parts wine, one part water, 
and I think I felt really crappy to enjoy it this way. Otherwise, it was so watered down. It was so ridiculously watered down. Now this stuff is strong. I could probably drink this four to one, like one part wine, four parts water. But I think I did this, uh, I think two parts water to one part wine. And it's, it's a really strong, I think at the last one it might have been one to one. I don't know. Totally different taste than any of the other wines you've seen me review. It definitely has that whiskey, uh, whiskey flavor. Um, so th that's it. I, I, I'm probably going to crack another bottle, I mean another glass or two from the next bottle. But, uh, so I can't give you the official two bottle, I mean like six, almost 16% at two bottles. Again, like I said, if I drink two bottles straight up of any wine, I think I might feel pretty crappy tomorrow or the next day if I didn't hydrate properly. And that's why, I, I'll remind you again, that's why I, I water down my wine, not just for the sake of the pleasure of cold imbibing through a straw, but for hydration purposes as well. Because if you forget to hydrate while drinking, it, it, it's almost guaranteed that you're gonna have the worst hangover. If you're doing shots all night, okay, and not hydrating at all, that is the absolute worst way to feel the next day. Because at least with beer, you get water, there's water in it. I mean, even though they, you know, whatever, they, some people say that the, the water doesn't matter in, in like wine or beer, but it does, I think it does. If I just drank shots of vodka or whiskey or bourbon or whatever, and no water, you're guaranteed to walk around like 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 a piano on your head. It just just it's not not a good way to do it. So hydration, 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 hydration is the key, and that may very well be why I, I rate these wines differently because it's my own fault that I'm not you know hydrating properly um, between it. And if I was a real scientist, I would I would always 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 have the exact same amount of water um, and and you know, ratio of drinking and, and a water. Like maybe I would pick a gallon jug of water and just make sure I finish that every time. No, this isn't a science project. This is just a, a, a vlog that's trying to entertain and inform people about the different wines out there because I don't think everybody's doing it the way I'm doing it. Um, that's it. I've rambled long enough. I'm going to crack open bottle number two. By the way, these high coupe these high coop things. I'll try and put a link in my uh, in my description. These are, I got these things so cheap. Best wine openers I've ever used. And I'm sure there's other ones, but these I got. I think I got them for a dollar. I think they normally sell for 15 or 20 bucks. I'm gonna put a link. If you want to impress your girlfriend or your family with a quality, 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 quality wine over, and this is not sponsored, these things have blown me away. I bought them as a goof, and they're my favorite wine openers ever in the history of my life, okay? Awesome, balanced, I mean, it, it, everything about them is so good. I think they're made in China, whatever. Let, let, let the American people make it for a dollar and we'll talk, okay? That's it for now. I'll come back maybe a glass or two in and uh, we'll talk more about this uh, wine. I've rambled, but I love it.